Bible, you know that. And you know there's no, the concept of Trinity is not in the Bible either. I would say the full articulation that comes from the later councils is not in the Bible. I would say the core of the Trinity is in the Bible. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Richard. Uh, would you believe that uh, when that that Jesus never uh, professed to come to the Trinity? Did he ever say? Okay, so, so Jesus was asked the question by the uh, by the Israelites. Why? What's the most important commandment? Did he say? Uh, he said, "Hear, O Israel, Lord, our God is one God." Right. Is the Lord our God? Jesus is saying our God. He's not saying God. You're getting away from that, really. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting his comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. Give him yeah. 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 You have to drag him away. I'll give you permission. I give you permission. Pick him up. Can I just pick him up? Just. So you We're think losing it's time, we needed to do 10. Did you profess that? Yeah, I did it. It used to be. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we see that the Gospel, so I mean, he claims to be divine himself. He claims to be divine. I wouldn't mind some of that information. Is there any unequivocal sentence that Jesus would have said? The preliminary Muslim is here. Oh, Hello, how are you? I do apologize. Carry on, no, no, I'll join you. We must have a chat. No, no, we are there. We are going to have a chat. Stay here, stay here. I'm here now. I'm not going anywhere. So Can I have a chair? I'm walking Sorry, by the railing now. <laughs> um, so you were saying, is there any other equivalent? Yeah, I will have my Jesus claimed to be God. No problem. I thought there are statements where Jesus claimed to be God. Yeah. Whether they were understood to be unequivocal at the time, quite possibly, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how Jews back then would heard things to what clarity. Uh, but I do think he claimed to be God, yeah. If he didn't unequivocally claim to be God, I don't think that necessarily means he is God. Uh, I might actually do a couple of blog posts about this soon about why, if Jesus wasn't clear about being God, or didn't claim it explicitly, why might that have been the case? So that's an interesting conversation we have to So, you're going to provide some evidence that Jesus, Jesus believed that he was God? Now, I've got, to, I've got to start off. Are we talking about Jesus as portrayed in the New Testament, or the historical Jesus as can be reconstructed using a secular methodology. Oh, that, that, that is totally confusing, Richard. You know what? If I was to say to you, are you a man, would you say, well, according to paradoxical blah, 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 blah. No, so the, re the reason clearly, I say yes, you're a man. The reason really I say this is that if I go to the Gospel of John, for example, which isn't the only place I can go, but it's one of the places I would go, right. uh, to prove Jesus is deity, many of the Muslims here, probably the most, will say, we don't believe Jesus ever said <laughs> That's why I asked, are you allowing me to answer this question as a Christian who accepts the scripture or are you asking me this as a historian who is not overwhelmed by my Christian presuppositions? Just clear, clear unequivocal statement from Jesus saying that he's God. Okay, doesn't answer my question, but thank you, I'll do my best anyway. Uh, I will assume both avenues are open. Um, so, all right, let's have a look. Well, let, let's put it this way, Richard, sorry. No, no, go for uh, it. If, if it is the, what I would call the secular perspective, then we would, we would suggest that they are trying to be as objective as they can be. So if you take it from your perspective as one who accepts the contents of the book, yeah. its interpretation is what we are going to be discussing, hopefully, yeah? yeah. So, I would suggest that you apply your reasoning based on what you accept of the book, rather than what uh, secular historians okay. are actually saying. That's Is fine. that better? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will say at the outset that yeah. as a Christian, if I'm allowed to do that, I can restrict that only to the Gospels, but also as a Christian, I believe all of Scripture. Oh, yeah, yeah. Therefore, oh, yes. I might at times interpret the Gospels through the wider framework of yeah, the rest yeah, of the New Testament. Absolutely. Understandable. Um, but yeah, if I'm doing that, thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. Let's have a look, you know. Um, John 8, 58, for example, this is an interesting passage which even Bart Ehrman, a non-Christian, a skeptic of Christianity, will say, Jesus is clearly here claiming to be divine. So, John 8, 58. There's something always lost in translation. Not only that, but we're not actually reading translations of the originals of the New Testament because we don't have the originals 
of any of the books of the New Testament, or of the Hebrew Bible either for that matter. What we have are copies of the books of the New Testament that were made centuries later, most of them many centuries later. And these thousands of copies that we have, not having the original, but thousands of copies made centuries later, these thousands of copies that we have are all different from one another in lots of little ways and sometimes in big ways. <coughs> I'll, start, I'll start at first. Uh, Let's start at verse 56. Talking to you. Um, I know. Sorry. Sorry. sorry no, 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 okay. on it. <laughs> You've got yours in. I have. Yeah. yeah. Did you give that to... Oh, it Does that provide the sound so, for the video? Yeah. Yeah, it was meant to be, but he it doesn't. doesn't. Matter. doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's... So, Jesus here is chatting to the Jews, and Jesus says to them, Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day, he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, should go for another two hours. Sorry. No, 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 um, I'll just start that again. Yes, Your sorry. ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Okay. So I would say a few years here. First of all, I think, uh, as I said before, Bartholomew himself, as sceptical non Jews, one would say this is a claim to divinity by Jesus. In terms of why that is the case, he says, before Abraham was, I am. This suggests pre-existence of Jesus. He existed before his human origin. Uh, even at Abraham's day, he was. I am here, the Greek word is ego I me. This is how the Greek translation of the Old Testament translates the divine name, Yahweh, which of course is the, the, the very name of God itself. And I think also the response here suggests that these Jews understood this to be blasphemous. The response was they picked up stones to throw at him, to stone him, uh, but Jesus hit himself and went away. My suggestion to you, yeah. at that point, Jesus was about to say, I am, and we don't know what he was going to say, the, because they were already in a state, the Jews were already in a state to, to attack him. They wanted to kill him. It was obvious. It was, it was, it was, the attacks were getting more and more and more. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was something that was about to happen. Yeah. And they just wanted an excuse. He said, I am, they picked stones and he, he did, he, he did one. He, he ran and he, he hid. He didn't complete what he was saying because I am in any stretch of the imagination is not a complete sentence. He's, and if you bear in mind what's, what's, what's followed straight away, it's, it's, a, it's a pick up of stones to, to attack him because you don't, you don't get into that position. You know, you don't, you don't, they're about to pick up the stones. He, he goes. That's it. That's that's the end of the story. There's no okay. completion to that. What's actually happened there? Okay. And I am, if you look at it, uh, simply from what uh, you know, uh, from a language point of view, I am just is is incomplete. Doesn't mean doesn't doesn't tell the story. Um, I would very much disagree. Come um, back. Go back. Go back to the beginning of that. What, so what does he say at the beginning of of that that John eight fifty eight? So I think the whole. Um, Sorry, of, of 58. John 8, um, 58, very, and this says, very you know, truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. No, so no, I, sorry, before that. Sorry, before, before that, verse 56, maybe. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. I would say the whole context here is about his pre-existence. The point is, how could Abraham know him? if Abraham lived centuries ago. That is the very issue here. I would say I am, actually it is a complete sentence before Abraham was, I am, I am the existing one. That's what it means. It's a claim to the by name. This is a sentence that in itself makes good sense. It makes sense within the wider context of John's gospel, which elsewhere portrays him as God, as the divine one. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. John 20, 28, Thomas said to him, that is Jesus, my Lord and my God. Uh, the I am, this is not me, it's all scholars recognize, there is a series of I am statements in John's so, Gospel, so such as when they say, 
come to arrest him, and they say, you know, are, are you Jesus the one we're looking for? He says, I am, and they fall to their knees before him. So everything within me makes me think that that's why I interpret it this way. Yeah. Could I just it's say something before you reply? Um, all texts have to be interpreted, so yes, it is an interpretation. So, Shabir, what are your thoughts on this passage? Oh, sorry. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just interested to get your perspective. Yeah, not a problem at all. As far as 858 is concerned, as you said, it is a matter of interpretation. If the verse says, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. If I were to say, okay, before Abraham was, so was I, would I be wrong? Um, if you said before, yes, I think, yes. Because the, the before context, Abraham the, the context was, of so was passage, I. Me. Yeah, in the context of a discussion of pre-existence, how can yes. someone from the past know you? I think, yes, you would be claiming pre-existence and therefore you would be wrong in doing so. Okay, yes. how would I be wrong? Because you, well, because I do not believe you are pre existent Okay, let's follow this through logically speaking. Yeah. If I were to say, yes, that the creator didn't know he was going to create me, would that make sense? Um, I would say it does not make sense according to the traditional understanding of God's omniscience. No, it wouldn't make sense. If we take God's omniscience into consideration, before Abraham was, was I? I would say um, you were not in the sense of being, which is what the passage is about. You might be in the sense of a concept, but this passage is not about concepts. Now, that's excellent. How would you know that it might be just as a concept for the Creator? For human beings, yes, I can understand because we are limited entities. But how can you equate that with the Creator in the context of omniscience again? Yeah? Say again, sorry. Before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying, yes? Yeah. Would that be true? You are saying no. I'm saying... If because it's a concept. It depends what we're talking about. I'm saying if Excellent. you mean I existed as a concept in God's omniscience, yes, that is true. I think Jesus is saying more than that. Yeah. I think he is claiming pre-existence. He's okay. claiming the divine name. and this is I have no issue. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, Richard. I have no, no, no issue yeah. with sorry, what yeah. we think he claims. Yeah. What I am saying is I'm making the same claim. Yes. Okay. How can that be wrong? Okay, if you're making the same claim Jesus I'm saying is making, I existed before Abraham did. Right, right. Okay. So I, did you. Okay. Well, then How I, would that be wrong? Uh, because that doesn't match the reality, because we didn't exist back then. We weren't yet created. That is why from we whose perspective? Uh, from the perspective of history, the world. From Abraham the human Jesus. beings. We are talking about the creator here, though. Okay. From the creator's perspective, before Abraham was, so were we. Yes, but I, I'm not sure this okay. is about the creator's perspective. That's not the issue. Okay. The issue Sorry. is if we take it logically to its conclusion. Okay. You see, if I can confidently assert that before Abraham was, so was I. Okay? And in that context, which we have to agree to in, in the context of God's omniscience, yeah? yeah? We all, before Abraham was, we were. If okay. that be the, in the sight of the creator, okay. from the creator's perspective. Sure. Okay. If that is the case, can I rightfully also claim some form of divinity? No. Okay. okay. If the answer is no, what makes the distinction in the context of yeah. existing prior to Abraham, what makes the distinction between my claim, your claim, and the claim of the individual here concerned Jesus, okay. according to that? The claim you are making, I think, is different from what Jesus is claiming. Okay. Number one, I can agree with you. Number one, okay. the difference is what we will address, but okay. the principle is agreed that we could have existed before Abraham. I would say that, that I'd say it's a different principle. I mean, it's it's so... Did we exist be, or being, not? Being different in knowledge and existing in being are so utterly different, I'm hesitant to call them the same principle. I, I agree with you, okay. but what I am saying is, look, did we exist in the broad, prior to in Abraham? In the broadest principle, yes. Okay. If we did, and if we were to view this from an absolute perspective, was there a difference between us and the existence of any other being then? If we're only talking about the widest sense, then, then no, there's no difference. There's no difference, is there? Okay, right. now the problem is this. Yeah. If we, on the widest sense, there's no difference, we all pre-existed yes, okay. in that context, yeah? Before Abraham, but we can't even say that because even Abraham existed. Okay. Are we following this? Ish. Ish. Okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah? I'm because not a magician by any means. No, no, okay. not at all. Don't worry. We are okay. all learners. Yeah? What happens next is this. The indivisibility of the creator has to now be brought into question. 
okay. Are you following this? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. You've got to take okay. the next step. Not a problem at all. Uh, Hear, O Israel, yep. the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Or the Lord one. could be the Lord alone. We might have to that passage. Let's say, you. let's say the Lord alone. What does yeah. alone mean? Uh, the, the Lord's God is the only God that the Israelites should worship and follow, not the gods of the other nations. Okay. Were those gods of the other nations in reality in existence? Uh, no, unless you're referring to them as demons. Well, if that is the case, then again, if we were to interpret it, here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is alone, in the context of divinity, it is true. Uh, of the highest... Uh, yes, in the sense of being true divinity, yes, but I, I'm saying the point of that passage may actually be more not in an ontological, that is, in terms yeah. of being. Not yes. that he is ontologically alone, yeah. but that for you, Israel, he is the only God you follow. Excellent. Okay. But what you are saying to me yeah. is going beyond what would what would be understood by the common man. Am I agreed? Uh, I'm not sure I would necessarily Okay, let's, let's follow this through. Okay. When the Jews picked up the stones to stone him, yeah. he ran and hid. Okay. Yeah? He was saying to them, before Abraham was, I am. Yes. They picked up stones. Yes. Now, the question is this. You said, rightfully from the perspective, yeah. they attributed divinity to him. That is why they picked up stones. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Now, if we take this on its own, yeah? Yeah. Sorry, Richard. If we take this on its own, yes, we can have a five-hour discussion and we still won't come to the conclusion about this verse because it is so open to interpretation. I, I, However, this, I, with the greatest respect, of course, you're treating no, no, me with lots of respect. No, no, absolutely. From my perspective as yes. a Christian, I think my interpretation is far more natural than yours. No problem. So I'm not sure. So I would qualify your statement with mine. No problem yeah. at all. As natural as one who believes in it. What I'm asking us. Well, to I would do, also say. As with, so, as I yeah. said, Bartram and not a Christian, yeah. he recognises this claim, and I, I think right. to, I could be wrong. I'm happy to be no, wrong. Uh, of course. I suspect that most New Testament interpreters, whether or not they are believing yeah. Christians, yes. would also interpret this text this way, especially no considering what else yeah. John says yeah. in his gospel. No problem at all. If you take this further, you see, if we are to take, and you rightly pointed out that what you accept is in totality, yeah? yes, the Bible. Yes. Okay. Aids to understanding are an issue which can be discussed, but the main thrust is within the covers of the book. Yeah. Now, I would suggest to you, if you look at the uh, Gospels yes. initially, yeah. you find that even his disciples were totally and utterly prone to misunderstanding what he said. Is that not correct? Uh, on occasions, yes, that is correct. Right. Let's go on occasions. That is the disciples of Christ, according to this. Yes. What about the ones who were not the disciples? They too can misunderstand, that is true. Total misunderstand. Yeah. Totally misunderstand. Here's an example. We are all familiar with that uh, famous uh, quote, I and my father are one. Sure, I was just, I'm just going to say, sure. that, is a folk, that is a passage that I don't know enough about. That's why I never go to that passage. No worries. No, no worries at all, Richard. But what we will do is we'll just go through it we can only understand as much as we can understand yeah and we can leave it at that okay but there he says i and my father are one yes the moment he said that they picked up stones to stone him okay now question uh, uh, what did he say he said i and my father are one okay. they picked up stones to stone him okay now the crux of the matter is this what was he doing there yeah he was walking in the porch yeah they come to him and say to him, Master, if you are the Christ. Can I say, what chapter is this, sorry? The Gospel of John, chapter 10, 10 started verse 23. Thank you. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Carry on talking, I'm listening. Yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah. yeah? So they ask him, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Okay. Yeah? So he goes and he says, you know, my sheep hear my voice. He goes on talking about how goodness is done. And then he says, nobody can pluck them out of my hands. Yeah. Nobody can pluck them out of my father's hands. Yeah. I and my father are one. Yeah. They picked up stones to stone him. Yeah. Now, the next few verses are crucial in our understanding of what was going on. Okay. He says to them, many a good works have I shown you for my father. Yeah. 
for which of the good works do you want to stone me? They said to him, according to the narrative, for a good work we stone you not, but for making yourself to be God. Blasphemy. Yeah? Now, here is Christ just explaining to them according to that, I and my father are one. No one can pluck them out of my hands. No one can pluck them out of my father's hands. I and my father are one. They pick up stones. He says to them, many a good works have I shown you. For which of the good works do you want to stone me? Now, if you think about it for a second, Richard, he is equating their picking up of stones with good works. Sorry, he's, he what, says, what you mean? He's many a good works have I shown you. Yes. For oh, which of the good works do you stone me? Okay. Why is he equating good works with stoning? As in, sorry, why is he equating the cause of stoning with good works? Yes. I see. Um, I think the point that he's trying to make here is that he's done nothing wrong. In fact, he's done good things to help people. Therefore, he's saying it's unjust for you to stone me. Why are you doing it? Yes. Absolutely excellent. We can take it accordingly. Okay. He is actually showing them, well, you know, on observation, what have I done? Which you want to stone me for? Yeah? Okay. Many things you have seen me do good. Have I done anything that is worthy of me being stoned? He says that to them. Okay. And what do they say? For a good works, we stone you not, but for blasphemy. For after being a man, you make yourself God. a God. Now, what are they saying to him? Well, what you just they, said. <laughs> <laughs> what I just said. Yeah. They are accusing him of attributing divinity yes. to himself. Yes. Okay, now what should Jesus have said there? According to the reasoning of 8.58. Well, I mean, hold on, let me just see if he does actually. Yeah, sure. I guess what he should have said there is what he goes on to say. Uh, Jesus replied, I've... No, I he's... Know, sorry, after this, wait, bear with me. Well, he says... Not, um, is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified <laughs> yes. and sent into the world is blaspheming because yeah. I said I am God's son? Now, yeah. what, work, work this, you tell me. Yeah. When he said to them, when, he, when they said for a good work we stone you for blasphemy, yeah. What does he realize suddenly? According to the narrative, yep. he just realized they've said something here, okay? They've attributed, attributed divinity to him. So what does he do? What does he, he do? He's, he talks about how the Old Testament scripture itself calls many gods. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, when it says, is it not written in scripture, I said ye are gods. Yep. Who is claiming these people are gods? Sorry, who is claiming these Jews? According to the because he's referring to Psalm. Okay. The book of Psalms. Yeah? Yeah. Where the verse in Psalms or in the Psalm itself, it says, I said you are gods. Who is making the claim that they are gods? I have to check the context. I presume God himself. God. Yes. Now let's get this right. Yeah. Okay? If God is claiming there are other gods, yeah. yes, would there be any blasphemy? If God was claiming that there are other gods in the way that God is God. Yes. Stop. Would, yes. The way God in the way that God is God. Yes. Now, what do you mean by that? Okay, so maybe it would help if I just clarify yeah, how sure, I interpret sure. this. Verse. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to accept up front this is a difficult verse. Christians have scratched their <laughs> I head agree. I agree. Not a problem you know, at all. The best explanation yeah. that I have heard is well, first of all, in the original context, the gods here, I think yeah. referring to the unjust judges of Israel. Um, we know that in the Old Testament that term can be used for a human intermediary. So I think it's used the judges. I think at one point, you know, God says to Moses, you will be God to this people. Yes. Um, so I think that's what it has in mind there. Mm. In terms of why Jesus is therefore quoting this, yes. I think the issue here is perhaps twofold. I think partly he's trying to catch them out. Okay. He's trying to say, you accuse me of blasphemy, but your own scriptures yep. talk about those who are gods. Yes. So it's kind of, to some extent, it's exegetical. It's an exegetical challenge, as yes. it were. We see a similar thing in... Um, Mark's Gospel and possibly Matthew and Luke as well. You know, yeah. you say that the Messiah is the son of David, yes. but Psalm 110 says that David calls him Lord, how then can he yes. be son, etc. Yes. Um, as with that passage, with that passage, I don't think he's denying that the Messiah is the son of David. Yeah. I think he's trying to say, but he is also more, he is also Lord. Mm. But I think this is a similar verse in that I think in both he is trying to catch them out yeah. through their knowledge of scripture or lack thereof. Right. Um, but combined with the theme originally of, is it mm. Psalm 82.6? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, which is about the unjust judges. I think the yes. point here is being raised that they are being an unjust judge of him. Yes. That's the best explanation I've heard. Not a problem at all, Richard. Yeah. But let's just follow this yeah. reasoning yeah. forward. You see, they have made a claim against him. Yeah. It is like me. Sorry, brother, I'm using you as an example. You handsome fellow. Yeah. I turn to him and say, 
how dare you do X? Okay. He says, why, what have I done? Okay. Yeah, so, so I explained to him, I said, look, this is what you did. Okay. Yeah. He says, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> go back, have a look at what it says there. Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. Okay. Yeah. But then he doesn't stop there, does he? He qualifies it at the end. He says, if that came to them, yeah. why say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world yeah. that he blasphemes? Okay. What blasphemy is he talking about? Well, he's referring to how yeah. Jews which blasphemy is he referring to? What did they accuse him of? Or blasphemy. Yeah. Associating himself with divinity. Yeah, he didn't claim to be God. Then they well, say, they, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> the verse actually says, "For a good work we stone you not, but for." Oh, sorry, I'm confusing context. Blasphemy. Yeah, no worries. Um, but for blasphemy. Okay. For after making, after being a man, you make yourself like God. God. Okay. Yeah. Question. When he justifies his position, yes, okay. and he refers to the word blasphemy, which blasphemy was he talking about? Well, now he's talking about Psalm 82, 6. And how okay, that's if we, right. If we look at that, is okay. Psalm 82 actually suggesting a divinity, a definitive no, divinity? No, it isn't, is it? No. So why did he quote that? Well, as I said before, I think the point may have been he's trying to kind of catch them out of the scriptural exegesis. Now, when you say he's trying to catch to, them which out, which is very similar to yeah. what Jesus did out of that. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Richard. When you say he's trying to catch them out, I mean, what kind of evidence would uh, would actually satisfy me that that is what he was trying to do? Rather than me thinking, wait a minute, he's actually explaining to them and telling them, wait a minute, you misunderstood this. Yeah. I'm not claiming divinity here by saying I am my father. Let's say you're right. As a reason. Let's say you're right in this passage yeah. that Jesus is here saying, yes. through what I've just done, you are, you know, you're yeah. incorrect in saying yes. that I've claimed divinity. Correct. Okay? Uh, I'm actually open to that. Yeah. Unlike yeah. most Christians, because um, I don't, I'm not very Absolutely, familiar I with, agree with you. Not with a problem. 1030, I don't yeah, go no, to that no passage. Problem at all. I'm quite open to the idea yes. it's yeah. they're united in purpose, not in being. Yes. So this isn't necessarily a claim to divinity. Yeah. But even if Jesus is saying here, yes. well, I've not just claimed that. That doesn't mean elsewhere in the Gospel of John, he doesn't. Agreed. I think, okay. Agreed. But don't you think, for the purposes of clarity, if an issue started off at A, progressively goes to Z, yeah. but in between, F, G and H is not as clear as A, B, C, X, yeah. Y, Z, yeah. how would you interpret G, H? Should it not be in the context of what is total? Or would you Absolutely. actually now Absolutely. extract that right. and then try and fit everything to fit that? Which one would you do? Right, in the context of what is total, and that's actually why I hold to my interpretations yeah. to some extent. It's not only to my interpretations, I would say, make sense of the passages immediately. Yes. But I think the whole of John's Gospel, of yes. course, and the New Testament, yes. teaches the deity of Christ. Yeah. Um, now, when you so said that the whole of the New Testament teach the deity of Christ, Matthew, Mark and Luke, oh, where I does think, it teach about? Do. Give me a reason, give me, I mean this particular verse, I would suggest that it is open to interpretation as you rightly said, but I would suggest that where the issue of divinity was actually addressed, as it is in John 10, 30, you find Jesus, according to uh, the gospel yeah. itself, is putting up a robust defense I mean, against say, this charge. Yeah. You say where the issue is addressed, I think the issue of divinity is addressed many times both in John and in the New Testament. So this isn't the only passage we should look to. Mm. And as both a Christian and an interpreter, I'm sure yeah. as Muslims you would do this. So as Muslims you believe in the Quran, the Quran itself says there are some clear verses, there are some unclear verses, and actually I think speaks ill of those who focus too much on the unclear verses. As Christians we have a similar principle. Uh, so we would say interpret the unclear passages like You see this, the, the difference the respectfully, passages. Richard, is that uh, the statement you refer to is contained in the Quran. Yeah. Have you got that in the Bible? So, first of all, we don't necessarily About need to. clear and uh, unclear verses. First of all, we don't necessarily need to. Even if the Bible does not That's acknowledge fine. its lack of clarity at points, that yes. doesn't mean it isn't. No, of course. But actually, Second Peter does talk, for example, yeah. about Paul's letters and says there are things in them that are hard to understand. Yes. Um, yeah. and, it's, and it is interesting, actually, just with uh, the Gospels in particular, mm. Jesus' own yeah. teaching. Can and I just play devil's advocate just for one second? Can, can I, yeah, go on, after hurry. this, can I come yeah. to you? Thank you. Because uh, Muslims often say, why didn't Jesus claim to be God and you know, worship? And that's an interesting question. But part of my response to that is actually we see in the Gospels, all of the Gospels, Jesus isn't as clear as he could be. In Mark, he says he speaks in parables lest they understand, which is fascinating. 
Jesus, I think, in Mark, as I said, poses this challenge to them to confuse them. He, he, he asks questions that no one can answer. So I'm not sure Jesus always intended to be clear. In terms of why, that's an excellent question. You can ask yeah. that in a minute. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's Devil's follow. advocate. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's say that I have never heard of Paul. Who is Paul? Okay. And, okay, and how does he prove that he, who, he, who he is? Okay. So first of all, actually, most of the time, I, I have been referring to the rest of the New Testament, but I would say um, I don't depend on Paul to make my case. There are other letters in the New Testament, not by Paul, and the other Gospels and the writings of John, that I think also teach the deity of Christ. So I don't need Paul, but even if I were to defend Paul, who I think he is, um, I think, I mean, the traditional narrative, you probably know, converted on the Damascus Road, had an experience, vision experience of the resurrected Christ. Um, he portrays himself as you know being in harmony with the other apostles. He goes up to Jerusalem. They give him the right hand of fellowship. He has received, I think, in the early church. Um, we see the other Christian authors of kind of end of first century, beginning of second century. They speak of Paul as in harmony with the other apostles. Uh -huh. um, so we would say he is a late comer, but he is an apostle in harmony with the other apostles, and that the prime apostles are gentle. Apostle meaning. Uh, Apostle can make, so Apostle literally sent one. Um, I mean, sorry? Uh, literally? Literally it means a sent one. The sent one. Okay. okay. Um, literally a sent one. Uh, in the context that Paul uses it, because it's used differently, Paul uses Apostle to mean someone who has seen the resurrection of Christ. Uh, I think in the Gospel, I, I'm not sure, I think in the Gospels it may refer to ones who were involved in the earthly ministry of Jesus, but I'd have to check. I can't remember if that's apostle or disciple. But anyway, that's how Paul uses it. Do Christians follow the religion of Paul more than they do the religion of Jesus? No, we see them all at, we see that Paul is a faithful apostle of Jesus Christ, and that both the teachings of the earthly Jesus and the teachings of the, of, uh, the New Testament, which are by the Holy Spirit, um, we see them all as being important. Jesus brought the law and didn't destroy the law. Right, very happy to talk about what that means. Paul this, destroyed this, this the law. This is all very interesting. This is now quite different. It um, is. So I, I don't I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. But we'll just but follow we'll yeah, this on and then come you, back to that. Go back, go back yeah, to we'll, we'll carry on with uh, what we were discussing. Yeah, yeah? Sure. Uh, But going back to what you said, Richard, yeah. you see, as I said about ABC, XYZ, yes. and you've got GH. Yes. Yeah? Now, if I look at the New Testament, yeah, uh, about the confirmation of the deity, the question that arises to me constantly is that Christ, according to what you said, may have said things and then said, lest they understand. Yeah? In, in Mark's yes. Yeah. yes. He will say things and they will not understand. Yeah. Okay? Now, if that was the case, then there was no reason for him to try and justify his stance. What do you mean his stance? Sorry. Whatever his stance he said, what? whatever he said, okay. yeah, or did, okay? okay? If they were going to raise an objection, yeah. he didn't need to justify his position <laughs> if, if, yeah. if the reasoning behind this was him saying things which they hardly understood anyway. Okay. Why did he find it a reason to clarify certain? And you know, oddly enough, you look at the statements, every time the issue of divinity is raised, okay, something takes place. Yeah? You have got this where he says, before Abraham was, I am. As soon as he said that, they picked up stones again. Yeah. Question If he was telling them in explicit terms, he is the creator. He is right. part of the divine, as it yeah. were. Yeah. Then honestly, what, would, what should he say when they misunderstand? For example, in John 10, 30, when they said, we accuse you of blasphemy, that's why we want to stone you. Being truthful, should he not, not have said, look, yes, I am? Well, first of all, it's, it's only untruthful to deny something that is true or to affirm something that is incorrect. He has done neither. I think we do see both in our own experience and Jesus in the Gospels right. that we are not always sorry, as clear as Sorry, Richard. Can. When yeah. you say he has done neither, let me ask you yeah. this. They picked up stones. Yeah. He says, many a good works have I shown you. Yes. For which of the good works do you stone me? Yes. They say, not for a good works, but for? Making myself to be God, yes. And what, what are you claiming he is saying? In, uh, in John 10. No, Jesus, what is, he, what, I, what is your claim that he is claiming? 
He is part of the divine. He is a deity. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I've lost track. Sorry. No, no worries. John eight or John ten? John sorry. ten. John ten. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what he's claiming. He could be claiming to be part of the divine being. He could just be claiming to um, be acting in accordance with the divine will. I'm open to. Okay, it. not a problem. Yeah. But the question is not that. Okay, the, the issue is about his claim. He said, "I and my father are one." one. Your belief accepts this idea, doesn't it? Yes, not based on this passage. No, no, but you accept the idea. So when the Jews picked up stones and they said to him, or he rather said to them, I have many a good works have I shown you. For which of the good works do you stone me? They say, for a good works we, don't, we stone you not. But for? Blasphemy. Did he understand what the word blasphemy was? Yes. He did. Yes. So when they said to him, the very next verse, for after being a man, you make yourself like God or make yourself God. Was that blasphemy? Was it blasphemy for Jesus to make himself God? No, to make the claim. Sorry, was it blasphemy to make the claim that Jesus was making himself to be God? Yes. No, that's not blasphemous. No, because the Jews aren't the ones themselves. When he said, I and my father won, Sorry, okay. yes, yeah. they thought he was claiming divinity yes okay christ in return says many good works yes which of the good works they say not good works plus for me for yes. after making after being a man you make yourself uh, god and then he responds back now he's put up a defense hasn't he he says is it not written in your law yeah what law is he referring to was it not his law also well, well yes, yes it was so was he being sarcastic now uh Sarcasm. I don't think he's being sarcastic. <laughs> so why does he say is it not written in your law? It was his law also. Oh yeah, sure. But the point is the highlight. This is your own scripture. You should be following this. Why you got it in one. He's actually telling him, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you think I am saying this, okay, let's look at how you approach this. Is it not written in your law? Okay. I said ye are gods. Now, there is a big problem here. Okay. Because he is telling them if your what you believe and aspire to or accept is telling you that an association with the divine can be made. Okay. Why are you finding it a problem when I'm saying it? Now listen to what he says at yeah. the end. Yeah. Whom the Father had sanctified and sent to the world simply because I said I am the Son of God. He didn't say I am the Son of God. He okay. just said I and my Father are one. He didn't make the I mean, claim, I'll, I'll, I am the I'll, Son of I'll God. No, no, no. We are talking about this, this. The sequence there is a conversation. Okay. He says, I and my father are one. They pick up stones to stone him. Okay. He says, why do you want to stone yeah, yeah. me? Yeah, if you can just, yeah. He brings it up again. Question. When he said, I and my father are one, he didn't say, I am the Son of God. But the verse completes, finishes at 8.34 and 35. If you look at it, okay. yeah, what does it say? Whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world because I said? Because I said I am God's son. He didn't say that, did he? At verse uh, 1030, he says, I and my Father are one. Interesting, although actually. There's something in the more interesting. Can I just say something interesting? Um, in the ancient world, to claim to. Before you go there, Richard, actually, he does make the claim. Okay. At verse 28, 29. What does he say? Well, I mean, if he refers to the Father, therefore making himself implicitly. So. Implicitly, okay. yes. But the ref reference is there. But he doesn't say that. He just says, what is it you are finding wrong with me? Sure. Because I am the Son of God. Now the question is this. Yeah. When he uses the term or the phrase Son of God, okay. is he now explicitly claiming that he is son, the Son of God? And would that constitute blasphemy according to his law? Well, I think I... Is that... No, brother. It's used here. Is it necessarily son of God? No, sorry. Is it necessarily a claim to divinity? Though perhaps it could be... We could discuss that. Yeah. Is it necessarily a claim to divinity? Though perhaps it could be... We could discuss that. Why do you think it's, it may not be a claim to divinity? Why it may not be? Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean here... If, if we were taking this verse alone... 
maybe he's just claiming to be a human being, special relationship with the father, he does the father's will, uh, that's why he's called the son of God. Just like in the Old Testament, an Israelite king could be a son of God. Excellent. Um, but if we are to take verses that are explicitly in relation to him as a human being, or as God's son, or as God incarnate, whichever, when he says things like, I can of my own self do nothing, yeah. as I hear, I judge. My yes. judgment is just because I seek not my will, but the will of yes. him that sent me. Yeah. John 5.30. When he is making a claim like that, what is he saying? That's interesting. I've got at least two explanations yeah, for sure. that. Either when he became incarnate, he ceases to exercise his omnipotence as divinity. Um, and therefore, he truly does depend on the power of the Father and the power of the Spirit from the Father to do his actions. Okay. Or the point isn't about power. The point is, I'm not a rogue God. I'm not going off doing my no things. Everything no I do um, is just what the Father wants okay. me to do. How about considering a third option? Okay. Bring it on. A human being chosen by the Creator to be a prophet of God. Is that possible? In which in which verse, sorry? In this, this section? No, Jesus Christ. In general? Yeah. Well, in general, I would say that doesn't fit with everything both Jesus says in John's Gospel and what John says about Jesus and what the New Testament says about Jesus. Excellent. So, yeah. Now, if we look at that, yeah. yes? How many books does the New Testament uh, constitute of? 27. 27. How many the Old Testament? Uh, 66 minus 27. <laughs> uh, is it 39? Yeah. 39. That's uh, that's how many? Uh, we'll take it uh, the Protestant one, not the Catholic one. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Right answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But that is what we have. Yeah. Maybe two extra, three extra, four extra. The question is not that. The question is this. Yeah. Right through the Old Testament. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right through the Old Testament, you have this Creator talking about him being a jealous Creator. Yes. Yeah. No other creator, yeah. nothing had been formed before him or after him. Absolutely. Isaiah 45. Yeah, uh, whichever you go to, it's talking about the oneness of the creator. Absolutely. Now, the question what, is this. What, what do you Sorry. mean by the oneness of the creator? That's the question I asked at the start. If, for example, he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is. One or alone. How, how let's let's take it? one or alone. Yeah. If I were to take from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. How do you think the word one has been defined? So how do I think the word has one has been defined according? So, for example, in Deuteronomy 6, 4, very common. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mark 12, 29, Christ repeats it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Okay. What one? So we would, I mean, as, as I said before, it can either mean alone, as in this is the only God you worship, henotheism is basically what yes. we call it. Um, or it could be numerical, which we're quite happy with, and then we say, well, yes, God is one and being three in person. Right, excellent. Let's, let's, let's look at it that way. Anywhere explicitly, and this is the problem, as the brother had started with. If I say explicitly, my name is Shabir, and then somebody else comes along and says, he said, his name is the patient one. Okay. Yeah? Okay. I'm saying my name is Shabir. Yeah. He is saying my name is the patient one. Okay. Which one is more accurate? Um, I would say, well, certainly his can't override yours because I'm going to trust what you say about yourself. It's quite possible that they're both true, that you have more than one name. His is more of an adjective than a name. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. But if you hear again what I said, okay. I said I am Shabir, yeah. and he is saying I am the patient one, which one would it be? Yes. If there's a conflict, yes. I will take yours. Excellent. But also, in this the example you just gave, yes. then there's not necessarily a conflict. Absolutely. But now, if you had to make a decision yes. for a third party here, yes. yes, and he says, okay, what did he say his name was? Shabir. Okay. What did he say my name was? Which one would he prefer as a human being? If we had to choose one, he would choose yours. So would Any I. logical yes. individual would choose right. Now, where you are being told by Christ himself, yeah. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, one or, or the Lord is alone. When he is saying he is alone, as an example, who? Okay. God. He has already made sorry, the distinction. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure he's necessarily saying he's alone as in, you know, he's the only being that exists. I think the point is, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Excellent. Lord. Yeah. Richard, yeah. Uh, 
you ring me one day. You yeah. say, Shabir, where are you? Oh, I'm in the park. Who are you with? I'm alone. Yeah, so that's, I'm not sure that's the kind of alone he's talking about. <laughs> exactly. Okay. The question is, anyway. the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But to me, I would say, okay, when the creator makes a distinction, yeah. yes, he makes it clear. So, if we are to take as a narrative, and I commonly use this, when Christ Jesus is referred to in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 22 okay. it says men of Israel yeah. Jesus Christ a man, a man so, approved yeah. of yeah. God yes. what does that mean uh, that's exactly what that was Jesus as the God man was man as well as God no 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 I didn't ask you that God. listen to me again Richard I appreciate what you believe no problem Jesus Christ a man approved of God. What it, does that mean? It means he's a man and God has said, I give him my seal of approval. I now am changing it a bit. Yeah. Men of Israel. Yeah. Moses, a man approved of God. Okay. Is that valid? Yeah, absolutely. There's a problem though, isn't there? Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't so. <laughs> I'll show, show me the problem. I'll show tell you the what the problem is. Men of Israel. Moses, a man approved of God by miracles, wonders and signs which God did through him. Yeah. Valid? Yes. No problem, is it? Yeah, no problem. Men of Israel, Christ Jesus, a man approved of God by miracles, wonders and signs. Sounds What's good. the difference between the two? I'd have to list the wording again similarly. Um, but the difference in the construction, I can't remember any. Okay, let's say it again. Men of Israel, yeah. Yeah. Moses, a man approved of God by miracles, wonders and signs which God did through him, yeah. as you all know. Okay. Men of Israel, Christ Jesus, man approved of God by miracles, wonders and signs which God did through him. Right, no difference. No difference right. at all. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Was Moses a mighty messenger of God? Yes, he was. Was Jesus a mighty messenger of God? Yes, he was. Okay. Now, if the, the, the writers of the book of Acts are talking about Christ Jesus. Yeah. Were the writers of Jesus, uh, the writers of the book of Acts, closer to Jesus than me and you? Uh, yes, of course, yeah. More than likely, they would have got a, be a better understanding of what they were saying than me and you today, who, are, who can interpret through a multitude of means. See, Am I, I reasoning correctly? I, I'd say chronolo chronologically they're closer. Yeah. The wideness of the Christian evidence, the whole canon of the New Testament scripture, yes. may be more available to us than it is them. Agreed. So it's conceivable yeah. in some ways we might know more, in some ways we might know less. Absolutely. Yeah. However, when it comes to the statement itself about them, yeah, about the individual personalities we are talking about, okay. yeah, me and you can readily agree, Moses was a mighty messenger of God, yeah. he performed miracles. Yeah. Has anybody claimed that Moses did them himself? No, uh, nobody can, because if they can... Well, well first of all, I mean... <laughs> well, he did. He not not, in, not in the mainstream of Judaism, no. You, you, get, some, you get some fringe no, Jewish you groups. You get fringe groups, groups, groups in Moses, everything. Yeah. In yes. the, the mainstream, but no. The mainstream, no. It is by the power of God. Sure. When Jesus did it, what was it? By whose power? Um, in a sense, it was by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Stop there. Sorry. You see, you are telling me in a sense, and the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 22 is telling me exactly yeah. who did it. So God did it, yes. But the book of Acts also talks about, repeatedly talks about miracles done through the power of the name of Jesus as well. When you are talking about that, yeah. if for example, and uh, you, you come across it in the Old Testament, Elisha's bones cured people. Okay. Yeah? You are familiar with that? I am now. Right. <laughs> okay. You read it in the okay. book of Kings. Yeah. Elisha's bones brought people back to life. Yeah. Now, who are we going to attribute those bones to? The bones or the creator? Um, the creator. It would have to be the creator. Now, when the well, when, I, I mean, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, it could, if be, I can it could just, be the creator yeah. acting through the bones, mm. maybe through a, his constant life of holiness. So, power res still Richard. resides over the bones. I don't know. I'm so glad you are saying that. Absolutely, we are. We can't about bones. We can't. Yeah. But you see, if if there is a narrative which clearly is telling you what that person did and who that person relied on, okay. as an example, and it's a classic one that we customarily use okay. in John chapter 11 verse 41 okay. when he brings Lazarus back okay. yeah commonly understood what is what does he say he says father 
I thank you that you have yes. heard me. Yeah. No, what did he ask for? Uh, he goes on to ask for Lazarus to be raised. Absolutely. Okay. Now, the amazing thing here is, let me equate 11.41 with Acts 2.22. Jesus Christ, a man approved of God by miracles, wonders and signs. Miracles, wonders and signs. Either one of them, when he brought Lazarus back to life, which one was it? Miracles, wonders or signs? You'd have to look at what those terms all meant. Let's um, see. The guy is dead. It, it, was, it was a miracle, yes. How does the New Testament use wonders? I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. Is it a sign? Again, so like in John's Gospel, sign is the miraculous deed that points to something deeper and reveals hidden reality. Absolutely. So you have to look at how Luke uses now, that. Uh, customarily, the definition of a miracle is something that is beyond what we would consider to be a natural yeah. event. And bringing somebody from the dead back sure after three days yeah. Yeah. is a miracle, okay? Yeah. But Christ himself, according to John 11, 41, is explicitly telling us, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Now the next statement is a bit telling for us. But because of the people that stood by, I said it so that they may believe. What? What must they believe? That you have sent me now who sent him the creator did. who sent moses the creator did. who sent in fact every human being sure sure but i think now, i think there is a difference moses was sent by the creator but the common portrayal of jesus who does say he was sent is that he was sent by the father he's not just a prophet he's the son yeah sent by the father yes. not a problem at all the question here therefore is this that if Jesus Christ says something according to the Gospels, yeah. if the Gospels themselves are talking about Jesus Christ in a particular way, yeah. yes, which one is more likely to be believed? One which is subject to 101 interpretations or one where, for example, it yeah. says in Mark 12, 29, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Well, I mean, that, now, as, as I said, that's subject to interpretation too. I mean, um, <laughs> that's the problem. All you see, are. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. But you see, which is why that the key to accurate interpretation is never isolation. It's always yeah, the absolutely. whole book. And if Agreed. you're a religious believer, the whole of the Quran, the whole yeah. of the Bible, the whole of the Torah. Yeah. 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 Although the word "belief," the word "religion," I don't really subscribe to because I'm always looking at what we have got available and assessing that. So, for example, I'm, we, a, I'm a Protestant. I no problem. <laughs> yeah. If the Bible it's is saying, uh, yes, if the if the Bible is saying Christ Jesus said, He has sent me. I hold no power. I can't do anything except by the will of the Creator. Okay. In fact, to the extent that in uh, Matthew twenty six thirty six, yeah, yeah. when he went in the Garden yeah. of Gethsemane, he himself says, "Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not as can, can I just? I will. Yeah. Not as." You I mean, you're saying about these, these verses, and I'm saying some of yeah. these verses aren't as clear as you think that. But let, let's say they're all clear. I'm still not sure what they prove. Again, we accept uh, Jesus yeah. became human. We accept, we're open to the idea that when he became human, he didn't maybe he didn't use his divine power. He depended on the Father through the Spirit to do it. Right? Can I stop you everything there? You're Richard, saying, can everything you're saying. Can I stop you there? Oh, sorry. Uh, apologies. Yeah. Everything sure. you're saying, yeah. I can accommodate within my world. Excellent. I just feel like within your worldview, there are yeah. certain passages. It's much harder for you to accommodate. Yeah. So that's yes. Yeah, Agreed. Actually, actually Agreed. Good. However, if we were to come to common grounds, okay. yeah, yeah, between your worldview and mine, okay. I would view it this way. Yeah. Where Jesus Christ says something, yes, so for example, the word one or the word alone, okay. yeah, what does it mean to any individual on the face of this earth, yeah? Okay. I'm always telling my... Uh, Pakistani brothers sure. and my uh, non-Indian brothers, you know, we Indians invented the zero. We're very great. Yeah, <laughs> the zero. Okay. Yeah. Now, ask anybody, what is the zero? Well, that's, that's the crucial yeah? thing. And I, I get this a lot of speakers corner, but the issue yeah. isn't what it means to anyone. The issue is, what did this mean to the audience who would have received it? Excellent. They, their interpretation is the most accurate. That's what I said. Um, who was right. closer to that? Right. Now, if they misunderstood him, and he corrected them. Who got it right? Uh, well, Jesus gets it right. He corrected them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now, if Jesus corrected them and dismissed their claim to his, but that's let me job. finish, yeah, yeah. to his divinity, yeah. who got it right? Jesus did, not them, yes. Who's got it wrong? 
the, the Jews accusing him. Yes. It can't be the Jews because they clearly said that he cannot be divine. Okay. So any other claimants to him being divine, as far as they are concerned, okay. in the context of what Christ said, who has misunderstood it? Him or them? Sorry, say that again. Sorry. The people who claim that Christ is divine, okay. they made the claim against him that he was divine, okay. and he rebutted the claim. Sure, that's the big How we issue. Yeah. yeah, but he rebutted it. Because if, if as an honest man of God, yeah. somebody asked him, are you God? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Are you God's okay. son? Uh, yes. Are you God? He should have said yes. Okay. But that's he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. What, do he, what he yes. does do, he actually tells them, yeah. you've got me wrong here. Is yeah. it not written but, in your law? So I would say the so. fact that elsewhere in the Gospels yeah. and in the New Testament as a whole, um, both Jesus claims to be divine and the New Testament teaches us to be divine, mm. that I'm going to prioritise those clearer passages yeah. than this unclear passage. And I've given you an explanation Agreed. wherein Jesus isn't necessarily denying the claim to be divinity. He's accusing them of being unjust judges like in Psalm 82.6. Mm. Yeah. And like we see elsewhere in the Synoptic Gospels, mm. he is trying to catch them out through yes. the use of Scripture. Yeah. A good example, as I said, in Mark's Gospel, he talks about how can David be, sorry, how can the Messiah be the son of David? Yeah. Again, I don't think he's actually denying that. Uh -huh. The point is he is catching them out of their own Scripture reading. But the question, so, so, I, sorry Richard, yeah, the question is, sure was, was he the son of David? Yes, but he was more than the son of David. I think how could he be? Sorry? How could he be? He was miraculously created. Good question. So some have actually suggested that through Mary's biological line, he is also son of David. But also, even if not through Matthew's line, he is the adopted son of David. Yes. Right. Let's let's look at it. You see, the problem is, and I agree with you, every verse that we attribute to him and his divinity has a problem. But if I go, for example, and this is the one where you have got it, and we've referred to it in Deuteronomy 6, 4 and Mark 12, 29. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Does anybody argue about the fact that this verse says the Lord our God, the Lord is one? Well, yes. Who? Because many people say the point of the passage is not the Lord is one. Yeah. The point is the Lord alone is the now, God of Israel. Now, don't you think... If you go yeah. to, I'm, I'm sure if you go to some Old Testament scholars, yes. who believe, and I don't believe this, but who believe that the early Israelites believed in henotheism, that is yes. many gods who only worship one, yes. rather than monotheism, yes. those scholars would say, well, yeah, this isn't teaching monotheism. It's saying only worship alone. I agree with you. Now, I'm not going there, but the point is... Yeah, of course. I mean, almost everything is, is disputed. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. But, the question, but here's the, question, the problem. The, the thing is, once you start interpreting all of Scripture together, yeah. um, there, is, there is much less to get confused about. There is much less to dispute. And that is why, actually, I take issue with a lot of secular scholarship. Yes. Because I think there is a flaw to it. And this yeah. is why I believe in approaching religious texts through uh, as believers. Mm. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's fair yeah. enough. However, when you want to try and objectively look at something, yes, that, you are going that's to fascinating. have to... objectively. Yeah, you are... I mean, th there's a free... Is kind of a secular or a, a non-religious approach any more objective than a religious one? Because, I, mean, I, I mean, I would say, I would... If, if Christianity is true, yeah. then it has the most accurate worldview, and therefore interpreting the text through that worldview is, of course, the most accurate form of interpretation there can possibly be. But if, if you are going to say something like that, uh, and you look at it from a believer's perspective, yeah? yeah? Away in uh, Isaiah, we are told, come, come, let us reason, says the Lord. Yes. To reason, yeah, you'd have to have something to reason with. So yeah, I'm not disputing Number reason. 